Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. Uh, we've been looking at this um, book and we've just been thinking about the life of Jesus, who he was, and some issues about his life. And I uh, hope that you found it a help. And um, we're going to come to the end now. So we've looked at a, a general rough idea of Jesus' life, his teaching and um, we're looking at his claims on um, page 182 was he a myth was Jesus a myth um, the idea that Jesus was spun out of the early church mind and that he, he was an imaginary person well the basic facts of Jesus death and resurrection are there historically verified so it, it's impossible to say that he's a myth when you've got these eyewitness accounts and such a variety of them um, and information outside the Bible confirming these basic facts so the myth hypothesis is not not viable was Jesus misunderstood um, or maybe you know people spun about who Jesus was you know maybe they met Jesus but he died and he didn't rise and people just made it up was he misunderstood I think Jesus made it very clear when he went into the temple and he cleaned out the temple that he was more than just a prophet when he said pull this temple in down in three days and I'll, I'll raise it up again you know, people would know that he, he was more than just a man because the temple was the presence of God. So I don't think he was misunderstood. I think people knew very well what he was getting at. It. Was Jesus mistaken? Um, was Jesus mistaken? Let's just play the advocate. He was saying Jesus was mistaken then one of the most beautiful human beings in history was a fake was a fool I don't think Jesus was that stupid was Jesus mentally disturbed someone who was tenderly kind to all types of people I don't think so did Jesus mislead his followers I think that's hard to believe um, a man who's helping lepers and helping the poor and people like that, I don't think he, he, he was mis misleading his followers so then we're just going to read um, Matthew chapter uh, 27 but when the morning uh, was come all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death and when they abound him they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor then Judas which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented him, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, If I have sinned, that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See that see that see thou to that. And he cast down the piece of silver in the temple, and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver piece and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood they took the council and bought them the potter's field to bury strangers in wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day then was fulfilled that which was spoken of by, by Jer Jeremiah, Jeremy the prophet saying and they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him that was valued in the day of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me and Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Art thou not how many things thy witness against thee? And he answered him, Never a word, inasmuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. Uh, they had then a nob n notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, 
Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for any they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twin will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil have ye done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And when Pilate saw that that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of the soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him, and put it on his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man, Cyrene Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of the school, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had ta tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vestures did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and he said, and set up over his head his, accus his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right and the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou hast destroyed the temple, and build it in three days. Give yourself, Saviour thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, but the scribes and elders said, He saved others himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if we will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. And from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land, and in the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, sama biachine, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straight away one of them ran and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on in a reed, and gave him to drink. And the rest said, Let it be. Let us see whether Elias will come and save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the grave after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. And when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And Paul says, in Romans 5, he says, For, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. 
Christ died for the ungodly. When Christ went to that cross, he was dying on that cross for your sin. He was giving his life for your sin. He was giving himself for, for you. And if you want to get to God, if you want to know God, you've got to understand that Christ took your wrath and punishment. You should have been punished by God for your sin. On judgment day when you come before God, you're going to be guilty before him and in debt. And you can never ever pay that debt off in your life right now or forever. But the message is that God paid your debt by coming down and taking on human flesh. He was whipped for you. He was mocked. He suffered for you and went to the cross and gave himself for you. Excuse me. So that you might live. And when Christ died on that cross, he rose again after three days. And, he, and that was the proof that what he did for you was the truth. And was the was was the truth okay and before he died he had the Lord's Supper he had a supper with his disciples and that supper of breaking the bread and the wine is to remember his death and we had Judas in that before Jesus was crucified betray him for 30 pieces of silver we have the Gethsemane the garden of Gethsemane where the Lord is crying out as the great sweats of blood came down as he was praying about going to the cross and the resurrection and um, the writers in this book say in the resurrection all the gospels report that on the Sunday morning Jesus tomb was found to be empty and the body gone Although there are uncertainties about how the various accounts fit together, what seems to have happened is something like this. At dawn, on the Sunday morning, the woman returned to the tomb with spices. Although they had observed the burial of Jesus by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus on the Friday afternoon, they now wanted to pay their own last respects to him, and no doubt to make certain that the burial rituals had been properly carried out. Arriving at the tomb, they found the guards had fled, and the large gravestones had been rolled away. Concluding that the tomb had been robbed, Mary Madeleine ran back to Peter and John. The other woman peered into the empty tomb and were greeted by two angels, one of whom made the extraordinary statement that Jesus was not there. He had been raised just as he had been promised. With feelings of joy and amazement and fear, the woman ran away from the tomb. Altered by Mary, Peter and John ran to the tomb and found it empty from the linen grey clothes and the cloth that had covered Jesus' head which was unfolded up, lying on the side. The two then left, and Peter amazed, John beginning to believe that Jesus had risen. To understand the significance of the empty tomb, we have to realize that the only sort of resurrection the Jews received of was that involved in the body. The mere appearance of someone after the death would have been considered a vision or the manifestation of a ghost or a spirit, not a resurrection. So the fact that the tomb was empty fits with the biblical accounts that the appearances of Jesus after his death were genuine resurrection involving the presence of transformed physical um, body. And so there were many appearances. Um, appearance to Peter in Luke 24:34, Appearance to Emmaus Road, Luke 24:13 to 34. Appearance to disciples, Luke 24:35 to 43, John 20, 19, 93, 23. The appearance of the eleven, John twenty, twenty six, twenty nine, the appearance of the Sea of Galilee, John twenty one, one third twenty to one twenty chapter one twenty one to one twenty three, the appearance of the disciples in Galilee, Matthew twenty eight, verse sixteen to eighteen. The appearance to more than five hundred followers, one Corinthians fifteen six, the appearance of James, one Corinthians fifteen seven, the appearance of at meal, Acts chapter one, verse three five, the extension Luke twenty four verse 50 to 53 the accounts of the gospels of the appearance of the risen Jesus to his followers do not resemble imaginary accounts of mythical events some of the gospel accounts have the definite air of being eyewitness reports so for instance in John's account of the visit of the tomb we have the statement that John outran Peter and got there first he stooped and looked in and saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. 
These are the sort of incident detail, incidental details that occur only in genuine eyewitness accounts on, or in realistic fiction, and no one has yet invented realistic fiction. So we could go into many of the reasons why they... Um, excuse me. Why Jesus rose from the dead, but we'll just look at... Uh, books um, can you read that Let's see if you can read that okay the books that I would get hold of there is uh, let's see what we can get Sorry about this. Just trying to get. Just try, ah, right. Oh, okay, we're getting. We're getting there now. Let's get in. Okay. Blomberg, Craig Blomberg, Jesus and the Gospels, an introduction and survey. That's the first book you should have a have a look at. That'll be really helpful. I'm not saying I agree with everything. This guy, I'm a. Sorry about this. Ah, right, we can see a bit there. You got Craig Blomberg, Jesus and the Gospels, an introduction and survey. Apollos, 1997. And then F.F. Bruce, The Hard Sayings of Jesus, Hodder, 1983. Really, really good book. Okay. And Philip Yancey, The Jesus I Never Knew, would be a good book. Uh, uh, R. N.T. Wright, from an academic point of view, would be a good book to have a look in the challenge of Jesus. Okay. And then, if you look at further down, you have James Henry Boyce, Foundations of the Christian Faith, IVP. That's a very good book to look at the theology of the Christian faith. Okay. And... Uh, And then you have Craig Keener, the IVP Bible Background Commentary. Alright, that'll be very helpful. Have a look at that. The Craig Keener book by IVP. Alright, so those are the books that I would recommend you to get. I would recommend you to read F.F. Bruce, The Hard Sayings of Jesus, Hard in 1983. Craig Blomberg, Jesus and the Gospels, an introduction and survey, Apollos 1993. Uh, if you want to look at academically the subject, um, N.T. Wright, The Challenge of Jesus, SBCK 2000. Also Robert Stein, uh, Jesus the Messiah, a survey of the life of Christ, IVP 1996. Michael Green would be a very good book to read. Who is this Jesus? Hodder, 1990. And France, R.T. France, The Evidence of Jesus, Hodder, 1999, would also be good. Background to uh, the Gospels and Theological Reflection. James Montgomery, The Foundations of the Christian Faith, uh, by James Montgomery Boyce, IVP, 1986. Uh, Kenneth and Berger, Ke Kenneth. Barker and Colin Berger, Zondran NIV Bible Commentary, Volume 2 would be helpful, Zondran 1994, and Craig S. Keener, the IVP Bible Background Commentary, New Testament IVP, alright, um, and also, uh, who else is there, if you want to read the Gospels devotionally, uh, have a look at J.C. Ryle's the four Gospels very very helpful if you want to look at some academic thinking on some of the Gospels Google Henry uh, Leon sorry Morris especially his lectures on the Gospel of John uh, are very very helpful um, 
and that's it really um, if you've got questions about the New Testament go to the Bart uh, at the Ehrman Project YouTube channel uh, or website Ehrman Project on textual criticism uh, and um, I would go to um, I would go to Gary Habermas, Dr. Gary Habermas website for studies in historical Jesus, uh, Michael Lycona's uh, website for historical Jesus studies, uh, Dr. Evans historical Jesus studies. Uh, on a skeptical side you could always have a look at Dale Allison and Dominic Crossan and Bart Ehrman. Um, so I hope you found this a help and an encouragement to you as a Christian uh, to just think about Jesus and uh, just realize that he was a real historical person. Okay. And those who are skeptical, just to realize that you can't just be anti-intellectual and ignore Jesus. You've got to think about these issues. You've got to engage with thinking about who Jesus was. And if there's evidence for who he is, and his claims then you need to take those seriously and um, the skeptical response is woefully inadequate concerning the studies in the historical Christ studies uh, I've started off a little movement at the moment on the internet the atheist and skeptics are doing a little bit more on the historical Jesus than they ever did and that's because I was banging on about it and they've begun to change a little bit and consider the issue but our western culture uh, western intellectuals our western education system uh, need to do a complete revolutionary change and put back at center in our political theological philosophical academic discourse the life and teaching of jesus needs to be at the center again as he has been at the center of western thought and culture but has been pushed down at the moment by a modernism and a postmodernism and a post postmodernism uh, and an aggressive militant atheism that really is ultimately they're anti intellectual having their own agendas not wanting to be challenged by the real historical Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna close in prayer. I hope you find it a blessing and God bless you all. In fact we'll play a song and close in prayer. Thank you that you're not a myth, that you're a real historical person. We thank you, Lord, that you're our Savior. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He says, when the first come to him. Jesus Christ, we praise you today, and we worship you. We give you the glory, Lord, as our Savior and God, and we give you the praise, for you are our God, and we worship you, Jesus. If you do not know Jesus, come to him today. Trust him. Come to him now and give him your life. He was not a myth. He is alive today. He died and rose again, and he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he died for you. For God demonstrated his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved, so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life Jesus Christ loves you and he died for you and you rose again to bring you the new kingdom and he wants you to be part of that kingdom so come and trust in him my friend trust him believe in him follow him Jesus Christ has survived today Amen praise his name Praise the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord, the King, the Holy One, the Magnificent Savior, for me to live is Christ and to die in His game. Hallelujah. Trust Him. Come on, believe in Him. It's not just intellectualism, it's about a faith in Christ, the living Savior, the Savior of the world. Take you. Lord, 